The following podcast may contain some adult language. You've been warned. show dedicated to the Genesis role-playing system created by Fantasy Flight Games and produced by Edge Studio. The show in which we, your hosts, discuss all things Genesis from both the players and a GM's perspective. I'm Tony Fanning, and with me as always are my good friends and co-hosts, Chris Holmes and Stefan Dragonspawn. Stefan, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. We, uh, I gamed the uh recently uh with you guys and daryl last th- thursday in that genesis game which was awesome and the previous we can't say more than that for now <laughs> but it was still a genesis game we had some fun and the previous game i was running you guys through android which is kind of cool uh, throwing all kinds of service robots uh at you while uh chris's character zesri is trying to uh, to, to find out what's going on in his own uh, cyber deck rig. <laughs> yeah. After downloading some kind of rogue program. <laughs> That's right. No, I mean, I'm doing good. Uh, doing some stuff around the house, of course, uh, all winterizing, preparing for winter because it's coming. Uh, got the, the winter tires on the old Rebel Transport. Uh, how are you doing? How are you doing, Chris? I am doing good. Winter is here. We had mm. snow last night, so mm. less than an inch. Had to pull the grill into the garage. Forgot to cover it and pull it in. Oh. It's fine. Everything's fine, everybody. Don't panic. Oh, oh good. good <laughs> Everything's good. fine. The grill's fine. <laughs> the meats will be smoked soon <laughs> again. <laughs> um, yeah, been doing the gaming as well, you know, as always. Um, and uh, played a game last night called gloomhaven online Mm. fiddly bits a lot of fiddly bits i heard about that bad not bad but man i was confusing as hell but i've um, seen the we lost the box we got smoked we got pretty much smoked yeah (laughs) yeah we played that online yeah that was like a hundred dollars for that thing the box yeah. yeah you think you think fantasy flight is bad about putting there putting like all the fiddly bits for all some of their games holy crap yeah, you had my buddy had to actually get up, spend another thirty or forty dollars just to get the thing to put the pieces in, <laughs> or whatever the <laughs> hell, and he had to build that. I don't know, it was weird. But anyways, um, how about you, Tony? How you doing, bud? Not bad. Uh, still recovering from my uh, long road trip yesterday. Went drove to Chicago, went down for a concert uh, with my buddy Scott. Uh, went mm-hmm. and saw Bad Religion and uh, nice couple other bands and uh went to a little brew pub uh, a little fancy for my taste um, as i <laughs> as i put it to my friends online uh, a little too classy for a kid who grew up on powdered milk and um, what you were saying is you need to wear a tie next time and eat beforehand yeah well i ate <laughs> afterward so i went to the venue where the or concert after. was and had a damn cheeseburger because the tic tac sized gourmet uh, appetizer i had was not going to tide me over though tasty <laughs> yeah. you know the beers were tasty i had a Wasn't couple of, i tried they have trial sizes of their beers like 4.5 ounces you know so <laughs> oh i can drink two of those and not even have to worry about it little you know? mini beers yeah. right yeah. you know and um Baby they like a beer. giant they come everything was great the place giant. was amazing it's called the awesome. moody tom okay um, in, down in chicago yeah and uh, great place. All the food and beer was amazing, but it's just a little too fancy for my uh, in, my inbred Midwestern taste. So, <laughs> I'm a po' boy. I prefer somebody to just pull meat off the grill and hand me corn, and my, I'm good. That's right. Well, <laughs> speaking of simple tastes, that's kind of a that's kind of a theme, of, kind of of our show. What what, what kind of what's our show kind of today there? Yeah, we got ourselves no a way. show. Uh, show mm-hmm. title uh, is going to be episode 91, Genesis on Easy Mode, which was a uh, a user or listener 
uh, suggested topic, uh, Travis Allison over on Twitter uh, <laughs> gave us the uh, the idea, and we'll be uh, reading his question a little bit in the uh, main topic. Yes. All right. But first, we have something special in uh, boosting the signal. Yep. All right. Well, hey, here we are. The signal. This is where Stefan shares all the ha Genesis news. Um, uh, projects from Edge Studio section of the Drive Through RPG section. However, Stefan, mm-hmm. this is something different. So you're boosting a signal uh, for yep. whom? Well, that's it. So um, this is a little different uh, this time because I had a special project uh, this year. So uh, first of all, yeah, fellow greeters, hello, fellow gamers, hello, hello. So uh, I have friends in Toronto uh, have this little company called POW Sewing, P-O-W Sewing. And they made for me and my podcast co-hosts recently a uh, a little, what I call a dice kit. This kit includes one of each of the following. A uh, stand-up dice bag with uh, drawstrings, uh, a dice tray, a roll-up bag with uh, a dice pouch, pockets for pens and notepads, and a drawstring as well. Uh, so uh, all, it's, all of this is done with our podcast logo. I uploaded that to them and they printed it out on material custom made uh whatever length is needed and then they mixed and matched uh the colors for each kit colors of blue and orange that are throughout the logo and the uh, the genesis books you know and they even matched the, the little buttons the snap buttons for the dice trays that match the uh, the color scheme of uh, of everything else and cool. yeah, and uh, I surprised my two co-hosts with uh, their own kits uh, recently. With that, um, they look amazing. They, they, they you know, choose all kinds of pattern uh, materials as well for the, say the the inner inner lining and so forth. And uh, so I want to th- thank thank uh, Jennifer and Corey Judd very very much for their great work on this. All the uh, the work and intention. Uh, they, like I said, they look amazing, uh, and I think you, Chris, and Tony uh, have seen them, uh, have them now, and uh, are are very happy with them as well. Oh, absolutely! Oh, yeah. They are Love fantastic. That. Oh, they are so great. Yeah. All the, all my dice fit in there. I did have my my Genesis dice were in a bull um, bull skin sack mm. um, that did not fit, and now they do. So thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> they look awesome. Yeah, yeah. they do. That's yeah. So cool. and, and you're not and kidding about uh, kidding about the um matching the colors and stuff because the drawstring yeah. matches mm-hmm. the internal has the teal blue color f- pulled from the um from our logo. Yeah, it's fantastic. Love oh, it. Oh yeah, love they, it. They do, they do great work. Mm-hmm. And they've done and they've done some other. Uh, custom stuff for yeah. some of our own mutual friends, some with podcasts or some not, but yeah. uh, whatever they like, you know, well, one of our friend, Matt Stark, he, he's a big cyberpunk fan. So mm-hmm. he has a couple of dice bags that uh, had a cyberpunk theme. Um, so yeah. uh, I highly I mean, I recommend bought, them. I, I bought some, I mean, I bought some stuff. I bought some other dice bags off of like Etsy, you know, mm-hmm. for like, you know, um, say like an aliens, rpg one you know it has like the embroidered you know whatever in there um this is just as high quality as that i swear yeah. i mean these are yeah. this is really good i dev- i highly recommend it too Mm-mm. yeah no. they, did, they uh, did good oh yeah and so if you want some ideas uh well, i highly re- recommend them as well uh you they use a, f- uh, a website called spoonflower.com there's okay. a touch thousands of of patterns Mm -hmm. uh on there you know if you like unicorns just type in unicorns and you'll have hundreds of them small (laughs) patterns large patterns different colors etc uh 
and those can be printed off. Uh, you can upload, you know, send them an image. Like I sent them just a logo and they did a uh, tapestry kind of uh, motif on it. So it repeats. Uh, they, they match the colors cool. so they can, they can do that. And uh, so I'll, uh, we'll include a, a link for the Spoon Flower logo, uh, website they use. Yep. yep. Uh, they they yep. are on Facebook mainly. So where we'll have the Facebook link, but if you don't, if you're not on Facebook, then they do have their own uh, email as well, powsewing at gmail.com. That will be in the, in the link uh, as well. Yep. Yeah, we'll put that in the show notes as well. Uh, so yeah, for sure. So they do good work. You don't have to do the whole kit. They can do just a dice bag if you want, uh, so and so forth, or just the, the roll up, and they can even modify it. Like the, I know one of our friends Gary had. Uh, wanted one of those rolls, but you wanted them extra long for some reason, or uh, one other person wanted the dice tray extra large. Cool. If you want a larger larger tray, they can do that. Yeah, I must say the dice tray, um, it'd be nice to kind of hold some of the extra dice in, but I won't be able to roll as many dice as we roll. Yeah, a small <laughs> Wouldn't a small be able to roll all of them in maybe. there, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> a small dice pool, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But it can be all useful, yeah, when you're gaming and you just want to throw your dice so they don't roll all over the table. Right, right, right. So, yeah, so that was my uh, boosting the signal for today. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll also try to include some uh, some pictures on our Facebook page as well, what they, they've done, so you get an idea. And, yeah, and I want to uh, say, you know, they do mm-hmm. have the Finding the Narrative logo still. So if you're really, mm-hmm. really, really a fan of the show and you want to get a Finding Narrative uh, yep. bag of your own, I'm sure if you let them know that you are a fan and you want to mm-hmm. get one, they can make you one lickety split. So, oh yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. And we want, and we, and we're not getting any. We won't get no. any proceeds or anything for that. No, this is strictly we'll go, mm-hmm. all whatever they'll make on it. They'll they'll keep. So well, that's it. It's for them. You know. Yeah, it's definitely for them. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. We won't ask for anything. This is a free podcast. We don't make any money on it. We lose money every month. Yep. <laughs> for all of you out there. That's, that's what it. we do. We enjoy <laughs> doing it. So. <laughs> oh, <Well>, absolutely. <laughs> Just want to put that out there, too. Good call out there, Tony. I didn't yep. realize they had that, and people can yep. do that. So. Yep. They even have some patterns that are, let's say, not safe for work. They're... They're the ones who uh, <laughs> who made me a dice bag that matched another bag that my husband had uh, had bought me uh, with a very subtle pattern of uh, winged penises in in a, in a cloudy sky. <laughs> very 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 classy, of course. So, Fantastic. <laughs> yep. Yeah. They managed great. to find that same pattern and do a dice bag, and they surprised me with it. It's like, oh okay. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. That would be kind of cool in like maybe five ten years from now. Mm-hmm. Go to a con sitting down at a Genesis game or whatever, maybe running a Genesis game and yeah. somebody comes up with a finding a narrative dice bag that they have their dice in and mm-hmm. it's not Tony and it's not Stefan. Who are you? That'd be cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. You've heard of us? Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. All right. Well nice. well done, Stefan. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank Corey you. and Gen- Jennifer and Corey. Awesome. Well done. All right. Well, hey, welcome to the Books of Genesis. This is where we break down a section of one of the books of Genesis bit by bit. But this time, very special one, the suggested listener topic. I'm running a Genesis light adventure for like beginners and kids. Um, Now, granted, we're going to be talking about running games for kids. (laughs) But like I said at the very beginning of the show, this may have adult language, mm-hmm. so you might not want to have your kids listening to this show. <laughs> Correct. We've already talked. This show this. is not for kids. This show is not <laughs> for kids. The games we're going to be talking about you running will be, and we Stefan's already talked about flying penises. So mm-hmm. there you setting go. The tone. <laughs> setting the tone. <laughs> setting the tone. And you know what? I'll just turn it over to there. Go ahead. Take it, Tony. <laughs> All right. So Travis Allison wrote us on Twitter. Uh, with uh, and I'm paraphrasing here, but uh, has anyone put together a Genesis light? 
Uh, and then he told an anecdote about uh, how he uh, tried to get it to put together with his kids. Um, and at the end, of it, he finished it with, I keep wanting something simple, but that uses the narrative dice. So, well, Travis, the shorter answer is yes. Done. End of segment. Mic drop. All right. So <laughs> pause the recording. We're going to go to. OK, then we're going to go to. Yeah. yeah. And, um, what, advantageous threats ever. then <laughs> no, uh, all kidding aside we should talk about it uh first of all quantifying the yes answer so um fantasy flight yes. first yes. and then now edge studio have put out uh several um free rpg day adventures and one shots for uh the gen con uh gaming convention and um yeah um those are, first of all, the Maw of Abraxas and Grand Theft Ember for Keyforge. Lesser Evils for Realms of Terranoth and Descent, uh, Slash Descent. Um, that, that one's available online. Uh, uh, so was Grand Theft Ember. Uh, I didn't see the Maw of Abraxas, but it might be on Fantasy Flight's site still. Um, and then most recently, Ash is a power for Twilight Imperium. Right. Yep. Uh, yeah, I picked that up at uh, at the source, uh, free RPG day. Ash is a power. Pretty neat. And what do these have in them, Stefan? Well, uh, let's say, for example, I'm opening up the, the one about lesser evils. And so it's they start off with introducing you at least to the basics of the rules. For the narrative dice. So you got the core mechanics, a little rule summary that we talk about the dice, uh, you know, the 10 sided dice, or percentile dice as well, and then what the symbols mean, and what some of the terms that we use, of course, for uh, assembling the dice pool, upgrading, downgrading, etc. Uh, and then the difficulties uh, that will entail, and then all the other mechanics that you know uh, are about uh, the characters that are you're either played by the players or the GM, skills, attributes, uh, how to resolve combats. So it gives you a nice overview. In yeah, hey, case, Stephen, no. you said yes. you're looking at lesser evils. Do they have a when you're talking about skills and attributes, do they have like a one line, two line description of each? Yeah, it's a shorter description cool. than the yeah, than the core book. Good, so, good. Uh, yeah, they have that. In a, I'm detail. looking, I'm looking at Ashes of Power as you're as you're going through Lesser Evils, just seeing if they have anything new in here that they wouldn't might not have in Lesser Evils. Just to pull, pull that yeah. out if anybody was interested. Yeah. So, for example, you know, they mentioned charm. So, charm measures mm -hmm. character's knack for persuasion, appeals to a target's better nature, sincere seduction attempts, etc. But without going into the full details of the core book of why use this skill, not use this skill, etc. So, it gives you still a good idea, clear yep. to the point. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I'm looking at um, the uh, Maw of Abraxas adventure for Keyforge, mm -hmm. and it's got the same things. So, uh, cool. it's it's very common. Lee, uh, just the only thing that really changes for this little bit is the size of it, the font, the the layout uh, changes yeah. based on the setting that they use it for. Mm -hmm. um, it's essentially the same information. Now there are setting specific things that are added to, like for the Keyforge one, that's got very end here talks about Ember and what it right. is. Right, gotcha. Um, but um, the key things here that these all have, they all have. Um, an abridged version of the critical hit chart. And I know you want yeah. to talk about that, Chris. Yeah, you know, I really liked this. Um, the reason why I like it is because every entry is split up by 10%. So 1 to 10%. Initially. initially and then, a, a, you know, 11 to 20%, all the way up to when you get to the daunting bleed out, which is 121 to 135%. But up to that point, what I like about it is, first off, it's simple. You don't have quite as many different types of critical injuries. But if you think about it, the vicious quality or the number of critical hits that you have on your character already will auto-magically here upgrade you to the next um, 
uh, uh, critical upgrade to, to the next entry on this chart. Because no yeah, matter where you roll in this, you're always, if you add 10%, boom, you're going to go to the next one. 20%, you're going to go up two more. Um, I like that. I like that a lot. I might even just use this um, again, uh, you know, for now on, just because I, ju I, ju I just like that. It might feel like those two things make a difference a little bit. Because if you're running one shots, if you're running one shot adventures, if you're running a long campaign, you know, mm -hmm. the, the regular crit chart really does kind of spread it out well and, and gives you a wider array of Variety. effects that yeah. can be longer term effects. Um, but in this, um, yeah, it's just great for one shots. If you're running one True. that isn't one of these, if you're running one of your own, right. I'd certainly recommend right. using it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What else do we have, Stefan? There's also, I mean, these also have something else in them. Well, they, they, they do include, of course, the, the charts for spending advantages, triumphs, all the other symbols in combat as well. Fairly straightforward, just like the, uh, the basic one. Um, looking at, at it as I'm looking, you know, of course, using using the story points. Um, describes, the, the, describes in short detail the different adversary types. Yeah, I was going to say that as well, you know. Uh, strain as well and as wounds talk about damage yeah, and then what causes all those damages you know, adversaries different types minions rivals and nemesis uh, and then the yeah. last thing uh that each one of these has and uh and i wanted to mention it is that each one of these adventures has their own pregens yeah which are specifically oh, yeah. designed for the adventure so they have their own tie-ins for it, and they're um, they can seem complicated at first, but really they are much more simple than running uh, uh, or having character people make their own characters. And um, and on another thing here, like looking at the KeyForge one, each one of these pregens has the dice symbols on the character sheet and describes what they do and the varying dice you uh and what they do yeah yes yep. um, and then what each attack how each attack is done with all of the description b below it very well uh organized character sheet um with their motivation being very oh, very simple uh, mm -hmm. a singular motivation not a group of motivations um do you guys have an agenda for your pregens in there? I have, I'm again, I'm looking at the Ashes of Power, the Twilight Imperium. I have a mo motivation. I have an agenda. Then I have playing like Tori here. I'm yeah, um, playing like a this highlight. character. Playing this character. Um, that's a, those are those are actually really good things for um new players to come in yeah. and just read. It gets yeah. you quickly immersed into yeah. the character gets yeah, in yeah. their headspace right away you know what i mean yeah i think the I like agenda that. might be something new for twilight imperium just you like heroic abilities no right they, they just have the motivations the talents a very brief okay. description of the talents because because I'm, I'm looking at this i'm looking at this pregen here um he's a um doctoral candidate um a teori he's a hylar looks like mm -hmm. some sort of uh I can't even tell. He's got a freaking bubble-headed suit on. I don't even know. Um, but he's got like the, he's a field scholar, right? So it's motivation. He's a looks like he's a graduate student, taste for um, interdisciplinary work. But his agenda here it says he's required to record and gather all data and samples they can they can of new and archaic technologies. Boom! Right there. That's the first sentence. That's that's what you guys can. That's what you guys can do during the during the adventure and playing them. You're curious by nature and most excited about opportunities to synthesize knowledge from different fields for applied solutions. Now, an eight-year-old or a 10-year-old probably wouldn't know what that means, but I'll be damned if there's an eight-year-old or 10-year-old that isn't curious by nature. Yeah. Good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, right, right. you can kind of pull that together. I mean, so yeah, these are these are good. Yeah. And then, Tony, I think you had mentioned that. I mean, Designed for the adventure, um, it makes it a little easier for the characters, for people playing the game, kids playing these games, when the their characters fit in the story. And they don't have to have 
their characters fit, make their characters fit. If they're if they've already fit, it's yeah. that much. It's one level of the game that us as experienced gamers and actually I was thinking about this between the three of us, we probably have a hundred years of gaming experience. Okay. <laughs> and we're talking about a kid, a 10 year old kid that probably has a month or maybe not maybe five years of, I don't know, playing magic the gathering or Pokemon or whatever the hell cards. Right. Um, <laughs> that's one level of the game that you, that we would appreciate how to pull our characters into the story. But if they're already worked in, it's that much easier to get these kids involved. Right. Yeah. And and again, you're if you're running a one shot, you mm-hmm. want to have that tie in so you don't have to establish it. It's something that's already established. Exactly. Motivating the characters yep. into being a part of the story is already built into um, the character creation. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. What I like also in the uh, realms of Tyranoth one, Lesser Evil, uh, towards the end, they also have suggested spells already named and the type of spell they are and the effect oh cool so that could be a really quick one even a sign- signature spell fireball so one of the one of the characters nice. is a, or two is, is a spell caster so they've already got a few spells uh to go with because that's not something in this rules light adventure that they go through as mm-hmm. much they kind of skip the, the whole details of magic but uh at least you got an idea uh, you know, hopefully the GM will know a bit more uh, than than the players. But when you want to introduce a player, then that that's a good basic, uh, yeah, selection to go from to, to pull totally. from. And and if they want to, if you hint at them that you know they you can do magic in different ways, and if you want something, just let me know, and we can uh, we can work around it. But at least he's got yep. the basics covered. Yeah. And then okay. Tony, you have a you have a you have a note here about the two Gen Con adventures, one for Realms of Tear, not the Haunted City, and the Night on the Town. Though you know the rules aren't as abridged, but they again they have pre-generated characters for those. So um, again, those are out there on the website, I believe. Um, yes. You can download those. So. Yep. Yep. They have excellent pre-gens. I know the Haunted City had some uh, nice pre-gens that they came out with uh, mm-hmm. with that. Yeah, they're good characters uh, with yeah. great oh, stories. Yeah. So, oh yeah. Um, so, um, and then I also wanted to mention that uh, lastly here that though they're not Genesis, uh, we talked about them before. Uh, the Star Wars beginner boxes. Oh my gosh! Uh, Star they're, Wars RPG. They're mm-hmm. brilliant. They're brilliant. Um, there are four of them. There was one for each line of uh, Edge of the Empire, Age of Rebellion, uh, Force and Destiny, but then there was a fourth one that they did for. Um, the force um, awakens force movie. awakens mm-hmm. that ties into the movie a little bit yeah. um so if your kids enjoyed that movie that's a great way to tie the uh, to bring them into to genesis with that um but each of those uh has not only the things that we mentioned before they use you know even less rules uh for the system um they have a, a very pared down critical hit system instead of having the chart that we have in the genesis ones theirs is um a simple uh four-step critical injury chart you get one critical injury it's it's a one difficulty critical injury and it has its own effect there's no rolling to see what they got as a critical right just if a critical is applied you apply the next level of critical injury right and Um, then i think they i think and then i think they had in there for the gm that if um, you your PCs do a critical injury on an NPC, that NPC is just taken out. It's just um, defeated. Just that, just defeated. Just simple. And I think that's brilliant. Um, you'll want to do stuff like that. I think, especially in these games um, with kids, just keep it simple. Mm-hmm. Oh, like you that. scored a critical uh, hit on him. Describe how you take this guy out. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> mm-hmm. And. Um, Oh yeah. You know, then they also each one of those comes with four uh, of the really cool looking pre-gen character folios mm-hmm. plus two extra that you can download online. Yeah. Um, and also those include a halfway through the adventure a level up spending XP. Yes. So it teaches players how to spend their XP. Um, and I it's remember a limited that number of choices yeah. that you make. Um, and what I remember each, about oh go ahead. 
Plus, if you're running, if you're really only interested in running Genesis, but you want to introduce people with this, each one of these comes with its own free Star Wars dice, um, yeah. which and character tokens and maps. And, and I wanted to note that the Star Wars narrative dice have a slightly different color sle- scheme and use their own symbols, but they are essentially the same. It's essentially yeah. the same system. Yeah, you, you've got your success, f- failure, cancels, advantage threat cancel and you have your triumph despair um symbols but they're different symbols like tony said and um, they add the force die which is really only for you know it only use comes into use really with the force and destiny and the yeah and the uh, yeah and the uh, anyone with uh, force powers force yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah and, and one thing i wanted to say as well is they do a really good job in these introducing the rules um they start off very simple, a simple check, and then they add a more complicated check. Then they add it how to do initiative. Then they add, you know they build and just add more rules as the next encounter. The next encounter gets a little more complicated with a little more rules in it. They do a really good job building that up, and not only for the players but for the GM too. Mm-hmm. Running yep. the so, I I really like the edge of the empire one um and i personally really best. enjoyed the age of rebellion one more. yeah the age of rebellion are really yeah they're both brilliant um now, the edge of the empire one is more of a scummy get yep. yourselves out of trouble or into trouble whatever you want kind exactly. of thing <laughs> yeah and the age of rebellion one is uh, a stealth mission uh um, basically yeah rebels yeah, infiltrate infiltrate a, a, a rebel, uh, imperial base yep exactly a communication base yeah um and the and, uh, force and destiny one is more of a, a let's explore uh the morality concept of light mm-hmm. and dark side of the force right uh, really gets into that um depending on the maturity depending upon the maturity of the kids um you know they could handle something like that um i would say it, it all depends. It all it depends on a kid, really. Star Wars honest. is rated G, and I don't it think is. the adventures are much different. No, it no, is. Well, no. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about the theme being R-rated, X-rated. Or, you know what I mean? That. But I'm. I'm. I'm thinking of the morale, the concept of morality, um, with that, with force and morality, I mean, which you want the kids to be able to understand what mor- morals are, right? But <laughs> bring it into a role playing game like that. I don't know. I mean, I maybe they can. Kids are brilliant. They're smart. So going they could on, probably handle it. Yeah, moving on. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, now, in this case, Travis told us in the uh, message that he sent us that he tried to run something of his own mm-hmm. um, with his own with his kids and them converting their characters. Um, so like to kind of discuss some of the things you could do if you're making your own adventure and use you know have the players do their own characters kind of thing what tips and tricks uh do we use can we use uh to keep it simple you know keep it simple stupid the, the kiss method yep. yeah um Stephen, well, I know. you were really good at this with teaching players at uh con on the cop and you had something um, i did uh what point Someone had come up with with it, and I made copies and laminated, or uh, they, they almost look like like bookmarks. Uh, oh yeah. It, and it has uh, pictures of the of the different symbol, different dice with the names of them: boost, ability, challenge, and the symbols below. And they're paired left left and right so that you can, you can see how they oppose each other or cancel each other out. And then a fairly easy chart. Uh, that just shows the difficulties from easy all the way to formidable. So that I would leave with the players, you know, next to them. So when they do their dice rolls, uh, I may help them out on the first couple of dice rolls, uh, how to interpret them and how maybe to do that quickly. But after that, I, I leave, I let them do it. Uh, even outside the con, when I was back home here, with some colleagues from work uh, that were role players. Uh, we tried a couple of sessions with the narrative dice and yeah, I did the same thing a couple of times, helped them out. And after that, it's like, well, here's the bookmark. Uh, do the calculations yourself. Take the time you need 
we're not in a hurry. And I even expanded that uh, bookmark to include it on the sheet that has how to spend advantages and, uh, and threats, et cetera, right next to the bookmark. So cool. you can see if, if you have a couple of advantages, what you can do as a suggestion. There is a something I want to warn GMs out there, mm -hmm. especially with kids. Um, it will be very tempting for other kids to adjudicate somebody's dice for them while they're trying to figure it out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Whoever is the active player rolling the dice, have them do it. Don't yeah. have anybody help them. Have them do it. They'll get better exactly. at it. They'll get quicker at it. Right? Exactly. Exactly. Um, I've some noticed people that. people pick it up faster and mm -hmm. some slower. So, yeah. Right. And, yeah. and using the, the simple method of pulling out blank dice first, then yep. canceling out your symbols. You know, your first few rolls are going to be teaching opportunities, no matter what players you're new, that are new to this game, whether they're adults or kids. But with kids, you do. I, I, I have seen this. I've run for a couple of kids before, and they want to be the first to get it right. So they will shout out the answer. Um, so you'll have to throw that out there. You know, look, this is Susie's dice roll. Let Susie figure it out. Everybody exactly. else just... Wait patiently. Relax. Exactly. <laughs> yep. If and, she, and you, it, sorry. If she asks for help, then you can step in and, you know. <laughs> right. And you'll want to, as a GM, to help them and continue to, to help them. But mm -hmm. as Stefan said, help the first couple rolls. Mm -hmm. Then after that, hands off. Yep. Gloves are off. You do it. Yep. You know, it's, mm -hmm. you know. Because once so. they get a feel for figuring out their own dice. Then comes a desire to roll certain effects, and they'll have mm -hmm. things in their head that they want to do if they roll advantage before they roll that die, like yeah. we all do. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> as soon as they see a triumph come up or three advantage, you get that eureka moment, and they <laughs> immediately start canceling their dice. Before you know it, everybody's got it. invested, and they're enjoying the game. Oh, yep. yeah. Yep, yeah, yeah. Ran it for my um ran it for my um seven, eight year old um nephew. You know, he was just running around the table, you know, with his little lightsaber thing, you know. We were playing Star Wars and I'm like, All right, come on, count up your dice. What are, what are they? And he's like, Yeah, yeah, yeah and he yep. just quickly got it. You know, I'm like, yeah. Wow, it just wasn't you know, it was amazed to me just how quickly people pick up on on it. It might seem daunting at first. At but first, yeah. Just have faith; it gets easy. Don't worry. Well, then, I even uh, you, well, we we mentioned their names earlier, Corey and uh, and Jennifer Judd. I introduced them to a narrative dice as long as, as well as uh, Emma uh, last January 2020. We did a little cottage con up here, and I ran the haunted city for them. So they had their pregens, and I had the that bookmark page, and a couple of dice rolls uh, that I just helped them with. And after that, it's like, nope. You go, Jennifer. You've got the sheet. That's right. Work yeah. it out. Cool. Yeah. Cool. If uh, if you need help just interpreting what what to do with the, the advantage afterwards, we can make some suggestions that are beyond what's uh, on the table. But otherwise, it gives you a great idea. You know, be imaginative. Think of outside the box if you if you want. Yeah. Usually, kids have no problem using their imagination on what they want to do um, yeah. with their advantages and triumphs. Um, yeah. yeah. I, the ones that I've run it for, and I've heard other GMs say, um, they have no problem with it. Now, when I say kids, and I want to put this out right away, because um, I have had this happen. I had uh, a parent that was dead set on bringing their kid to the table. Um, I will put this out there. If you're going to think about letting kids at your table, if you're going to think about um, having, um, if running a game for them, the age or development level at which you should let them play. Uh, there is no ages X and up for, for most role-playing games. And there's a reason for that. There's two skills needed essential for um, role-playing games. Uh, reading comprehension is one. Yeah. And the other one is math. And even Genesis being math light, it still requires the ability to do simple math. Um, mm -hmm. If 
you have a child at the table that cannot do either of those things, it will become quite challenging and perhaps taxing on the GM to have to do it. If the parents are willing to sit at the table with them and do it for them, it may become less so. But as my mm -hmm. personal experience, nine or 10 is the earliest I let kids sit at the table because by that time they have picked up reading comprehension and uh, simple math skills. And that's just my personal experience, and I wanted to put that out there. Yeah, and in some ways, you know, especially for Genesis, uh, the language used is not that complicated. It's not quantum science. You know, uh, they're not going to use big fancy words to describe how to calculate, you know, uh, a pistol damage. <laughs> Pretty straightforward. So if they can comprehend that, and even if you have to explain it to them uh, verbally, once you've you set an example, they'll pick it up pretty quick. Right. Yeah, and that's, and a, that's, a, that's a good age. That was an age when um, the Lord of the Rings movies came out for my girls. And um, mm. they're about that age. And we let them watch those movies because it was a clear good versus evil theme. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the violence in it, it was violent. But it was a good versus evil, clear good versus evil. Now, when you have a real life, real world type situations, like maybe Shadow of the Beanstalk might be a little too real to life, right? You may have violence mm. there with cops and bad guys and whatever, right? Gray the areas, themes, yeah. Gray areas. Those might be those violence themes, and it goes without saying the sexual themes or whatever kids that young um but the violence themes granted they see it in video games or whatever um you don't have to bring that to your table <clears throat> um when you have kids that age now that's me as a parent i just say that just putting that out no, there and everybody every no. parent is different right shadow but, of the beanstalk um, is definitely made for uh, adult players and, and mm -hmm. keyforge is definitely kid friendly exactly now i was going to mm -hmm. mention yes that too and tiernoth again more fantasy, kind of Lord of the Rings like, right? Where you can make that. Yeah. These guys yeah. are evil. These guys are bad, right? Yeah, these guys are good, right? I mean, that's it. So, so you, anyways, you can die, you can change the dials a bit if you're doing an mm -hmm. urban setting. Okay, that could be a bit more gritty. If your audience is is up for that, that's fine. If you want to keep it more black and white, good versus right. evil, you and can where, still do that as well. And Twilight Imperium, um, you know, for, from what I'm reading of it and what I've picked up thus far is going to be a lot more political intrigue and we may not be something that um younger audiences are going to be as interested in gotcha um, yep. maybe okay. not yeah so yeah uh and another thing that i wanted to mention uh and this is specific to our uh our the, travis who wrote to us and that is mm -hmm. um you know he mentioned that in his anecdote that he had his kids convert their characters from another system and that be, and that and the reason why i think partially he said that they lost interest that's problematic most other systems don't uh translate specifically one for one uh things in genesis you really have to have a feel for getting the gist of a character when yeah. you transfer it yeah, and man. I think that's something maybe as a GM, if you're going to do that, where you want them interested in their own characters, translate the characters for them into the best version that you can come up with in Genesis mm -hmm. um, for your initial foray. Right. And then if they aren't particularly liking a choice you made, then together fix that after the first adventure. Yeah. Um, I think yeah, that it. will help if you do that yourself. Number one, it'll help you know the characters inside out and backwards um, and how they're used uh, in Genesis. And that is key um, mm -hmm. to be able to help players when they're having those analysis paralysis moments. Um, yeah. And uh, and then then the rest of that, though, is that uh, they aren't sitting there with the character creation rules open trying to make you know my bow feet that's sharpshooter feet in D D 5e how do i make that into something in genesis 
I don't know. What are these talents? What do they do? I don't know this game. I'm tired of this. Throw it down. You know, no. first lucky strike. <laughs> That's okay. how you do it. Whatever. You know, well, I mean, yeah, but be it. you have to do it within the, 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 the pyramid of talent. So they have You're to done. buy prerequisite talents and Got it. so on yeah. and so well, forth. So. That's it. You have to try to, to capture more of the tone of the character or uh, the concept of the character than yeah. the stats. One for one. Exactly. That's, yeah. That's what I, I was aiming for when I did my own like 3.5 conversion to Genesis with Dragon Stars. You know, I wasn't trying to get everything right. You know, uh, you look at you know you want to play a, a, a Drow character. Drow have lots of benefits, and they pay for it by having a level uh, penalty requirement. You know, uh, even a first level Drow is equal to maybe a third level first level character elf. Because right. they've got all these other benefits. Well, I'm not trying to emulate that. I'll give them a few benefits, but there's also a few drawbacks, and that's it. You might add more as talent as the character gets more experience, but I didn't try to get every little detail. Same thing with all the races of galactic races. There were so many ra- benefits for, for some of these races. Like, okay, can't just translate everything. They'd be way too powerful as starting characters anyway they'd be starting probably with only 10 xp <laughs> gotcha all right so um what else do we have here yeah, is there anything Talking else you guys want to add i i do go ahead up one thing i don't know do you have some something else Stephen? no not not coming yep. come to mind no so okay, well i go i have uh, i have, have one thing that i uh, that might help uh, and that is, um, if you want to, some of the more freeform games out there, like Fate or something like that, if your players are used to playing that, um, uncouple skills. If you're used to playing the very freeform games that are out there, uh, uncouple your skills from their uh, designed attribute. And uh, particularly, like, if you're used to L5R, um, that one is very much the same way it's uncoupled the skills are uncoupled you choose your approach and uh explain to players you know choose your approach tell me how you're approaching the situation if they're telling you they're pointing their um sword at the guy's throat and trying to tell him to drop the the thing that they want then have them roll a coercion check with their with their brawn um uh if they're telling you they're just yelling at the guy from across the room well, then have them roll their coercion check with their presence. Right. Um, that mm-hmm. kind of um, that kind of thing. And there's lots of ways to do it. It's free form. But the players are used to that format. And then you can bring in the coupled skills on your second or third foray into Genesis. Yep. And, you know, great minds think alike because I'm not – necessarily saying that but what i have to say kind of dovetails into kind of what you what you just mentioned there tony and it's um rules light (laughs) kind of what we're talking about Mm -hmm. keeping a light restriction to the rules and kind of use them as guidelines if you will um more than anything and then i basically more than anything new players especially kids think outside of the box i can't tell you how awesome it is for me to play these games that I've been playing all these years now through the eyes of my friend's boys mm. or my or my buddy's wife who hasn't really role played a whole lot and she just comes up with shit like, Yeah, I'm just gonna jump over this thing. I wanna grab him and just like pin him up against the wall. Sweet. That's roll it. Roll yeah, something. That- if That's you get what, advantage, spend it. Whatever, yeah. right? I mean, it's something like that. And the thing is, think outside of the box. Let them think outside of the box. It is going to be so e- It'll be so easy to say, no, you really can't do that. No, 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 no. Say yes, yeah. but. Say yes, yes and. but. Yes, and. and. Yeah. Yes, and. Yes, <laughs> but. Yes, and. Whatever. And nine times cool. out of ten, that's all you got to do. Just increase the difficulty of what they're going to do. Just yeah. let them do it. Don't even have them look at their character sheet. Just whatever skills are there, just say, what do you want to do? Yeah. What another, do you way to, wanna, mm-hmm. another way to make it simple sometimes, like, 
to, especially with weapons, like to heck with the number of advantages. Everything is too advantage to, to activate a critical or a quality. Tell tell with it. If you want to go with it, that players will want to uh, to get a critical. It's always awesome. Oh, I get a critical. <laughs> or you know, uh, yeah, be flexible with the rules. You want to do something like that, and that's what reminded me of that, Chris. When you say that a lot of new players will think outside the box because they don't know about all the rules, whether the rules say that you can or cannot do. So yeah, go go with whatever they they suggest and and make it possible for them. You know, uh, even if you increase the difficulty, give them a boost die. <laughs> it's like yeah, that's that's way too cool. I want you to succeed. Here's a boost die. Yep. Yeah. And um, yeah, exactly. And just have them spend have them spend that advantage. Have them spend that triumph mm -hmm. to pull off the cool shit that they came up with. Yeah. But the most important thing, all of this, and it's part of my tagline just have fun remember these kids the new players because we're talking about not only this is this this episode we're talking about is for kids but really new players yeah coming into genesis right we don't we want to make these rules lighter for them to understand like you know like jennifer and Corey, right they haven't played it before right mm -hmm. um and um we want them to have fun so they'd come back play it again right yeah. So, um, yeah, just keep that in mind, really. Um, that's yeah. my last bit of advice, <laughs> and it always is. <clears throat> so I remember my first game that I ran at the Con on the Cobb with Genesis. Yeah, I had Harrison all the way from uh, England came over to visit. He was using story points all over the place. He was adding elements, not just flipping a story point to get... Uh, mm -hmm. An upgrade. No, no, no. My character has this uh, chain that he, and you create almost a, whole, a backstory part of, of why he had these manacles on him. <laughs> yeah, I did the same thing in my games. Yep. <laughs> I remember that. Oh, that Deep Madness game, man. The Deep Madness. <laughs> yeah, that, crap, was, that, was, that great. was his second or third game, I think. At least, at least second game after mine. So. Yep. 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 So the point is, folks, uh, in and to to wrap up the show segment is that that there are things out there, the tools at your disposal to run Genesis Lite, uh, Travis. And they, uh, there's also um, things that you can do to help doing it yourself for your kids for a future attempt, if you wish to go back to it. Um, and uh, hopefully everyone out there is introducing new players now and again so the Genesis stays alive for as long as possible. All right, so uh, welcome to part three, Advantageous Threats. This is where we build, roll, and narrate dice results on some sample skill checks for our entertainment and hopefully yours. And this time, Tony will be taking Chris and I back to the Crucible for some Keyforge zaniness, zaniness, zaniness. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic fantastic mm -hmm. fantastic <laughs> all right you two chuckle knuckles mm. you're you've been hired by uh, lv's um an elven uh performer of some renown in uh the uh, hub city this this performer is pre preparing a new concert tour uh, LVs, uh, also known as LVs the King, uh, <laughs> is seeking a special kind of amber to amplify amplify their new Emoto amplifiers. See, LVs, they are a performer who prefers to strike emotion in their listeners. Right. And so they want emotion infused ember. And the place to go for that is a place known as the emotional landscape. Hidden right. deep in the um, uh, south of the Great Glass Desert, a zone approximately seven square kilometers 
where travelers usually experience a significant shift in their emotional state. Now, supposedly there is some deep blue amber that you need to pick up here, that find here. Um, and you have been going through an investigation trying to figure out where this deep blue ember is located. Running across oh, denizens cool. of the area, you've come across a group of settlers from a strange world. You've never seen these types of creatures before, but what caught your eye is these beings have their emotional like thoughts print is in cartoon bubbles above their heads <laughs> and as you are approaching them on a road you see like these little and they come up as these little emoticons uh, okay. in these bubbles and all of them have what look like faces with tears rolling down them above their heads oh. as they're walking with their hands tucked in their pockets and they have a very sad looking animal with six legs and a, a long snout with a sucker on the end of it pulling a wagon okay and that creature even has a bubble with a sad looking emoticon much like its own face above its right. head okay. okay and that was the first clue that you may have found the blue ember and right. you're approaching them. So who do we have approaching them? Go ahead, Steph. All right. I am Tusia the scientist. She's uh, a uh, little Saurian uh, dinosaur-like people, tall, green skin, uh, with uh, bluish uh, robes and garments, uh, with some kind of uh, cybernetic eye. Uh, over one of her eyes and uh yeah she uh she just loves to uh to, to share her knowledge and let everyone know how much she knows right on and well we have tweel of course the little martian rogue who um you know though he is a bit sneaky and shady in his dealings in the uh the crucible here he d does it in the face of like justice and believes in fair treatment for everybody you know dedicated to like protecting their their everybody's rights and it looks like maybe these people might be in trouble here um and uh you know he's got his tiny little he's got his small little um spaceship his little um space saucer that he's flying around on right. and um he'll just kind of hover up right up to the first person and you know ask him what's going on what's the matter okay. do you need do you need some help do you have some sort of martian translation device or um Perhaps a rank in um, <laughs> a knowledge that may help you understand them and them understand you, like perhaps uh, knowledge culture. I do not have a rank in that. However, how many story points do we have there, Tony? You have two player story points and one GM story point. At this Would time. it be out of the question and unreasonable for me to spend one of those story points to have a translation device um, in preparation for meeting new cultures, never having Indeed. gone to this area of the Crucible. Indeed, that would be within the realm of possibility. And so, therefore, I will flip your story point. And voila, you happen to have built into voila. your spaceship a bit of a universal translator. Cool. I love it. Yeah, this spaceship is freaking cool, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a small little... um. You know, he's got maybe he's got like maybe a small little speaker on it too. You know, maybe okay. amplifies his voice a little bit. So you right. flipped your story point and you're making an introduction. Um, Hello there. Um, my name's Tweel. What seems to be the problem? I'm Wargo. This is my family, the Wargos. We are weeps. 
Who are you? What are you? Well, I'm a I'm a Martian, and I'm I'm on a I'm on an important mission. I'm trying to find is it light blue ember? Ember? It's deep blue ember. Deep blue ember. Have you seen any of it near here? What is ember? We are new to this world. As Tusia steps forward like, and goes on to explain what Ember is in great detail, <laughs> how it's this okay. very complex no. uh, oh, substance. No. And I think, <laughs> yeah. Don't get him started. Her? her? No, her. Tusi? Her. Don't her. get her started. No, not this again. Crap. And how it can oh. help in this. And I'm looking for this Duke Blue Ember because we're hoping our, our patron, who's a. <laughs> 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 well, we uh, Warbo ex- uh, explains that uh, their family has come through a portal into a big open cavern, and there they lost their other whoop. No. Now they are weeps, but these animals that they use are whoops, of and course. the whoops were a mated <laughs> pair. Oh, no. And so the whole family is very sad that they lost the male whoop because the male whoops are protectors. And the oh. male whoop saw some horrible creatures that was trying to attack the family and it chased them off in the night. And their male whoop is missing. Now, near the, they, they came into a cavern. It was dark. But there were chittery, weird noises and an evil feeling in the place. Really? When you exited this place, did you see any of the deep blue crystal ember things that she said when you left? Um, there were a couple pieces on the ground, yes. And where is this at? Maybe we can Turn find you. back the way they came. Maybe we can find your whoop for you. Would you? Suppose we no reason why not. We would gladly trade you, you help us. We help you something from our wares if you find our whoop. If we do, I'm okay with. That. How about you? Are you okay with that? Yes, yes. If okay. you have any knowledge, anything worth uh, discovering, I'm more well, than you willing can to help. Follow you. our wagon ruts back to where we came from. We came from an, a okay. cave. Is there okay. a um, so from the way we came, Tony? Is there a place we might be able to direct them because they seem to be lost they're new here place we can well, they maybe keep, tell they keep them going they're the way they're going they're going to enter the desert and they're going to have to cross the desert to get to hub city um however you um make a one of you can make a knowledge crucible roll and maybe know of a trading post nearby where they can go to safety Okay. Ah, Ducia has a bit of knowledge of crucibles. Go crucible? for it. Go ahead. Right. That's probably a better check for you to make that. So this I is going to be an no average help. check. I have no um, help with that. Because you guys, uh, I'd say you guys did study the location that you're coming to a little bit, perhaps, because it's scientist, you know, you're probably pretty right. 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 Well, yeah. All right. So the average, that's two difficulty. So I've got one yellow and three green. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to spend a story point. I am not either. All right. So let's do it. Although before I can make a, a knowledge check, I can Uh-oh. add, I can, I, since I'm a know-it-all, mm-hmm. uh, I can add up to four boost dice. What? Yeah. And then all allies witnessing this uh, suffer one strain per boost dice. <laughs> I'm going to add two boost dice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so I, I think you strain. This. So, so I take yep. you strain. I'm gonna have to take listen to your strain. story again. Yep. Damn you! <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> so okay, so everybody listen to the show here. Yep. Not only has Stefan become the master of the boost dice, he has now taken this to a whole new fucking level, where he's <laughs> actually causing us strain now. Because he's taking boost dice. Good lord, Stefan. That's yeah. great. So, yes. I, uh, so Tusiata explains the the path to this uh, little uh, outpost oh, and how it, how it started and the the history of it. As we got 
four successes and one advantage. <laughs> I seriously don't think they need the freaking history of this goddamn road. Fuck. Well, there was one business who set up uh, out, that are out of Jackstown, and they set up a huge strip mining operation. However, they still do have a trading post nearby. That business is called Group Think Incorporated, and I happen to know three or four of the shareholders. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> they helped me develop my uh, crystalline rifle. And <laughs> excellent, excellent. You know what? All right. Can I can I make can I make a streetwise check? To let these people know who they really need to talk to when they get there. Yes. Okay. Yes, can do that. What kind of what kind of difficulty would that be? Uh, I have we'll a call yellow that and two hard green because you're just not. There's not a <laughs> not a lot of streets in an outpost <laughs> for streetwise. Oh. You know, know, if it was a major a city, you were sending them to. Yeah. I might know a guy. <laughs> yeah, you might. Okay, hard. We'll call it hard. Okay, I'm not gonna do anything to it, and I don't think. I have anything that will, I mean, my need for speed won't help here. Um, <laughs> won't? So, <laughs> no, I don't think so. All right, so I got three purple, a green, and a yellow. That sound good for you, Tony? Yep. Okay. Um, I rolled three threat and three advantage, so wash. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wash. So. Oh. Yeah, three. Yeah, three. Yeah, it's a walk. So that's a failed check. In other words, you don't know a guy. I um, really don't have any suggestions. I don't really have anything to add here. No, I, you just yeah. Good luck. <laughs> All right, so stay there. We'll go. meet Jeff. <laughs> so they go that way, and you guys start to follow the wagon runs. And yeah. as he did say, it is very easy to follow. No check needed. These wagon ruts traveling through this emotional landscape. Um. You can feel the pain of the grass that they rolled across as you're floating over it in your little spaceship. And as you're walking across it, um, you, too, feel the the pain of the grass doesn't seem to like to be walked on. So if you're Uh, walking, so so Stefan, if you're so picture this, so I think, Stefan, your character is walking and I'm only like three foot tall. Right. And he's in his little. So I'm probably hovering next to you. (laughs) <laughs> walking yep. and up right next to you. Right. And right. each one of you, with each step she takes, you hear an adi- you feel an additional like ow, 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 oh, ow. Oh, <laughs> oh. Oh, that hurt. But it's lingering the weight of the wagon that left the ruts. It's there. It's a constant feeling. Mm-hmm. You can follow it all the way until the grass kind of subsides to this rocky ridge. Okay. And you look down and there's this this, this ridge. Uh, there's a what looks like a road that goes into this canyon. Okay. And looking down into the from the ridge, um, it looks like it was once something. There's cave entrances. There's something down at the bottom of it. Um, knowledge science. Is that such yeah. a thing? In the- I have uh, to check. There's there, amber, there is, crucible. There is science. Yes, knowledge science. Nice. science. All right. Well, uh, no. Uh, Tuska does not have any ranks in science. Okay. Well, I uh, don't either. Well, then neither of you knows what the equipment down below was. However, um, you do see several caves and uh, this little road that winds back and forth in varying switchbacks down the side of the. Uh, the canyon. Well, you take the you, right. you take the you take the road. I'll fly down there. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Both of you um, make a perception check. All right. Okay. Do that. Uh, it is going to be easy. Easy perception One check. People. Okay. I got three green and a purple for me. Hey. That's good. All right. Here goes. All right, I have two successes and an advantage. Okay. I have one success and two advantage. (laughs) So, one of the things that you notice is that you've seen stages before. Uh, Down below, 
and this is for free. This is without your successes and and whatnot. Um, there's there there is something that is it looks like a stage, but then there's all this equipment around it, and um, okay, in the back. Which one of you had the most successes again? Um, I did. Yeah. Okay. Tweel so did two and two. You and get one. a good, you get a you get a good solid view, um, of this big cave mouth, and sure enough, leaning up, uh, by this cave mouth, is a tall crystal blue chunk of ember, um, tall by Martian standards, it's easily the length of your forearm, mm-hmm. um. And uh, you see it just kind of rings one of the the caves, and it's pulsing with energy. And coming out of that cave, because you had the most success, you both hear. I think that might be our missing moop. <laughs> or whoop. Yeah, and I'm going to use that advantage that I got to heal back one of the strain that I got from <laughs> listening to Shufflehead's story here. <laughs> All right. And, and, uh, our missing whoop. Okay. Yes. Um, what did you like to do? With two advantage. Two advantage. Well, with two advantage, uh, yeah, maybe... Uh, have a, a bit of a reading with her uh, cybernetic implant there, maybe a, a little glimmer of uh, some deep blue uh, ember that might have registered nearby. You do. Okay, so the blue ember that is outside the cave isn't the deep blue ember that you see, but it is blue mm-hmm. ember. Ah. And, um, but you're getting a reading from that particular cave and also from the contraption that's built around this stage which has oh, these right. wi- big wire things on it. Um, All right. For lack of a better description. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, but think... yeah, you do get a breeding coming from that specific cave from your cyber All right. eye that All deep right. blue ember is in there. Now, All right. some We're of going. the others may have small deposits, but that's the mother load. Oh, right. there right. then. I'll point in, uh, to my friend, and uh, that seems to be you, you the largest source. Yes. Okay. Well, let's go there. Then. Okay. Well, that requires that you take the road down, and then you have to go past the big contraption. All right. Uh, for those who don't fly. Um, of course. For Tweel, you can just fly straight to it. Are you going to wait for your partner, or are you going to just fly straight to it? Oh, go on ahead. Are there? Go, go uh, yeah, ahead. I was I was gonna fly kind of straight towards it. Um, now I'll with my you. with my with my perception, are, is there any other though hearing what I heard come from the cave? Right? Any other life forms? Any other any people working these contraptions, the science contraptions down there? Not from your perception. However, Not. make a vigilance check. Oh, uh-huh. okay. Sounds good. Vigilance, which is well, got a point in that. Okay, so that's going to be a yellow and a green. And this of... is going to be versus a difficulty of uh, let's see. So it is going to be a difficulty of four. A daunting check. Okay, now pulling on my um, insp- inspired by Stefan here. Um, <laughs> because I am flying above this place, kind of having kind of a higher ground, do I get a boost? <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Yeah, you do have a vantage point. Uh, well, maybe a vantage point. Okay. Uh, does that look good to you? It's nope, a I'm yellow. It. Flip the check. Oh, I'm flipping perfect. a story point to upgrade it. Perfect. Okay. Here we go. A yellow, a green, a blue, a red, and three purple. Holy heck of a almost made it. Darn it. <laughs> <laughs> um, That would be a wash, my friend. Yes, that is a wash. Darn it. Oh. <laughs> so many advantages. So many threats. 
and one <laughs> success, one failure. Yeah, that's a threat. That's a complete wash. Damn it. Okay. So as you approach, mm-hmm. you yeah. So I'm not seeing. So I'm not seeing anything. I'm like, yeah, yeah okay. it sounds good. And I'm gonna you, go down there. You get close to the machine, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden it starts to whir. <laughs> Oh, I think it sensed my uh, presence here. Um, what, you might want to head. You might want to take cover. <laughs> and this is just as um, <laughs> was it tu- Tunia, tu- Tusia, 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 Tusia. Uh, has rounded the corner and has reached a ledge. Uh-huh. At which point, she can see the top of the machine. All right, as you see it also start to turn as Tweel has approached close to it. Okay, then. And it's just moving slow, and some of the parts are moving counterclockwise, some are moving clockwise, and they're spinning around this large stage. And mm-hmm. the entrance is behind the stage. Yep. Yeah, I'm I'm kicking. I'm like, I'm like, I got a need for speed, baby. <laughs> All right. Buzz right We're into gonna the cage. roll initiative just so that you guys can go in order. Okay. Um, Sounds good. Yep. Alright. So okay. zero point three for me. Alright, so three advantages all all I got. Alright, so vigilant for her two full dice. I got two advantages, that's it. <laughs> Holy right. buckets were awesome. And yeah. uh, zero point three and two. Yeah, awesome. zero point two. <laughs> 0.3 and 0.2. And so I had 1.1, 1. 1, which will be for the best. <laughs> for the mm-hmm. best. <laughs> All right. Um, so <laughs> as soon as, so let's just say that as soon as you you go to punch it, a Pretty bunch much. of dark forms flood out of the cave. Holy crap. These dark forms, um, you've seen them before. You've seen them in uh, Hub City. Uh, they are black shard renderers. They are a dis demon. Creatures that thrive on the despair of other beings. Um, they have the ability to corrupt ember and turn it black. That's not good. <laughs> and uh, they're coming on. Oh, man. There are two particularly minion groups of three minions. Oh. One group is running forward on the ground um, and they are charging towards the machine and the other group have these strange black ember wings that look like an added device on their bodies and they begin to flap those wings and fly straight at Tweel. Oh, shite. Okay, so the device moving in the area makes the area difficult terrain for everyone, as its movements seem to be random to those Understood. who are approaching the area. Oh, okay. cool. There is, um, particularly if you were to sit center stage on the stage, things trying to get through the device to get to you would have double the difficult terrain, as there are parts going clockwise and counter counterclockwise. Um, so that's what the, creates the, 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 the difficult terrain of the battlefield, even All for right. flyers. Yep. Um, I'm, totally, these, I'm, totally, I'm totally picturing this, man. This is great. Um, and likewise, to set up the encounter for you, as soon as they came out and you guys see them, these are demons. They require a discipline check immediately upon sight Got as it. they evoke. They can evoke an emotion. Yeah. Which right. may even make things even worse for you. Right. So, fortunately for you, these things are simple minions, so it is an easy fear check. Discipline. Okay. Discipline. All right. All right. So, so let's do that green. before we roll. Um, and uh, and you guys had some advantage on your vigilance checks, so why don't uh, Stefan, you can have a boost die to your discipline check because of your advantage. Right. And Chris, sure. you can have a boost die. You can also uh, recover your last strain if you'd like for your three advantage. Oh, if sweet. Okay, that works. Yeah, that works. Thanks. All right, then. I roll and I get three successes and two advantage. 
Uh, so you succeed. And this is versus, um, I'm sorry. And this is easy. You said this is an easy one. It's one mm -hmm. purple. Okay. Um, so you succeed and you have advantage. What would you like to do with two advantage? Uh, maybe, uh, I'll, so, yeah. It's a fear check. You can give yourself a, a leg up yeah. on them. You've seen these yeah. demons before. You're not afraid of them. And, and, you know, yes, I, go, uh, I go on. I go on about some of the weaknesses that they may have, and what uh, how uh, uh, thoughts and, and, and emotions of hope uh, can, uh, <laughs> can can help. Uh, <laughs> so, are you passing a boost die then to your partner? Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Sweet. Add another one, homie. All righty then. Um, so I roll. So I already rolled, but I'll roll another boost die on there. I already succeeded with two advantage. All right. And that was a blank. Bah, that's okay, though. Um, let's see. So with my two advantage, I have a... <laughs> so Martians get this thing called Zap, Zap, Zap. It's called... Uh, it's an. I wonder if, what you think of this, Tony, to spend my advantage on. Um, as a, so as an out-of-turn incidental, a Martian soldier can spend a triumph... Oh, Mar can to... Um, when you're determining your initiative to ready a range weapon and then shoot it. So I'm wondering with just two advantage, can I just have my gun out? Yes. Okay, cool. Then I'll, I'll do that. I'll do that. Okay. As they're approaching. Okay. So, um, they get to go first. Okay. And, um, as minions, they get a maneuver and only a, a, an action. And because it's difficult terrain in order to move through the area where the, uh, the machine is to get to you two they must spend this entire round using maneuvers to get any space so they go from uh medium to short range from you uh tweel uh okay. and they go from medium to short range from you uh tunia yeah tusia yeah. right. damn i gotta all fucking right. write that down i'm gonna forget it that's all right <laughs> All right, so one of you may go. Go ahead. All right, want me to go? All right, so Tusia will picture these things. They're 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 demons. They have mm -hmm. like um, they're covered in black chitin. They have okay. uh, clawed hands and nasty looking fangs, <laughs> and they have these like emotional receptor, almost like antenna, but they they're kind of horny looking right. <laughs> yeah. horns wow, wow, wow. Uh, and they're those are <laughs> those are which with which they transmit uh despair that they've absorbed to oh. um to the emperor in their environment to and those are pulsing right now with energy their horns oh, okay oh, okay and then the group that's heading towards Tweel also has those black ember wings gotcha all right okay all right, so um, Tusia sees Twills like raiding his weapon real quickly. Oh, right, uh, we're being attacked. So she takes her, actually has to take a maneuver to ready her weapon. <laughs> and uh, so that would be one maneuver. Uh, and then take another maneuver to aim at this group. So you okay. got two yellow, two yellow. Uh, I guess at short range, it's a uh, purple and a blue. She's taking two Correct. strain to double to aim. All right, and our, uh, I will not spend a story point. I will just uh, at this point. Okay. All right. Um, oh, will you? So yes, as a matter okay. of fact, the uh, the these things um, are dodgy. They are like oh. bouncing around trying to dodge the machine, and so mm -hmm. therefore that it makes it very difficult to hit them. All right. All right. So, so I will problem. be upgrading your check, and now all the points are in the player's pool. All, all right. right. All right, then. So let's do it to it and roll the dice, which is ooh, zero successes, but I got three advantage. So I'm shooting, <laughs> causing lots of confusion, uh, but not actually hitting them. But uh, let's see, it doesn't have any special qualities for the weapon. So no, I'll just uh, 
confusion will help uh, my uh, my ally Twill uh, hit them. <laughs> okay. Nice. So for two advantage of boost dice and one one in last advantage, I'll just recover a bit of strength. Okay. Excellent. Cool. All right. So then the last player slot goes to Twill. So yeah. when you're saying it's difficult terrain, um, what if I want to perform a piloting maneuver like evade? Would it be um, two maneuvers to do that then? Yes. Okay, so then I would, so then my vehicle and it would need to take two strain. Okay. Because I want to shoot at the minion group. Right, well. So when so. you're in a vehicle that's doing um, maneuvers and you spend strain, it's the vehicle strain and yours. Yes. So let me Make a note as to the strain on my vehicle. Oh, like a champ. That's fine. I got plenty. <laughs> a little okay. system strain to the saucer and, and a little strain to you, and that's right. you get a because, shot off. Because the maneuver that I'm making is evade. Oh, <laughs> nice. Performing this maneuver, dodge and coming fire until the beginning of the pilot's next turn. Upgraded difficulty of all checks made against the vehicle. And by characters in the vehicle. So I'm, this is going to be harder for me. To, so what, but I'm that's okay picturing, what I'm picturing mm -hmm. is this this floating contraption. It's got all kinds of spinning, whirring parts that are flying through the air. Twill mm -hmm. is dodging those and while doing it, giving the demons a, a difficult chance to get anything off at him. That's right. And then he's just going to try and just get a, get a shot off. And of course, all Martians need a space pistol double barreled <laughs> linked disintegrating space pistol hello <laughs> all right ack, ack, so ack. what range what range are we talking about Tom? Ack, ack. yeah ack, 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 ack. <laughs> uh we're talking short range uh Sweet. to the to the flying group uh medium to the ones on the ground um so the flying group automatically upgraded so that's going to be a red for me okay um, any, so I got two yellow, two green, and a red. And a boost die from your partner. Boost mm -hmm. die from a partner. Does that look good? I'm perfectly fine with that pool as, uh. And we have, we have all the story points? You do. Well, this is just a kick-ass, awesome maneuver that he's doing, so let's upgrade that. This is the story mode awesomeness. Sure. Coolness um, factor. Got re it. Remember the rule of cool, right? <laughs> Oh, shit. We're just going to cancel those. All right. We have two successes, five advantage. Bah, somebody's going to get disintegrated. All right. Let's see. So we're going to have eight damage coming your way. The pistol does pierce one. Um, I think I, I need to add another damage as well. So that's disintegrating plus one damage. I think I have it built in. So let's do eight damage. Pierce one linked crit four though hmm. no you know what we're just gonna we're just gonna link that because i like the double like getting off du the double barrels <laughs> okay so, so we're doing double barrel space pistol yeah it's disintegrating the space pistol <laughs> yeah so you disintegrate one with just the damage alone okay linked activates it again gazorch it hits another one and disintegrates it. Now, they're a minion group of three. They each have four wounds and a soak of three. So we're talking 12 wounds total for the group with soak two because of your pierce. And Got you it. hit them twice. Got 12 it. wounds. You're taking four off of each shot. You did how much? I did eight damage. Pierce two. Pierce one. So 16 pierce total. Four. 16 total. S 16 pierce. 16 pierce two effectively. Yes. You so your um, <laughs> your pistol <laughs> obliterates the whole swarm of minions <laughs> flying. Oh, oh, they just well, disintegrate it, into nothing. It's, it's, it's a good thing we weren't told no disintegrations. <laughs> well, it's a minute. <laughs> They're demons. They need to be disintegrated. <laughs> you know this. Come on. All right. Damn it. We should have saved their ears. I think there's bounties for those. Ah, fuck. <laughs> That's okay. At the top of round two, <laughs> roll your 
oh. initiative or roll your vigilance, the two of you. All okay. right. Vigilance. I think that's one and one, I think, for me. Okay. Vigilance what's, is one of each. What's the difficulty? Uh, the difficulty is going to be uh, average. All right. Okay. So we got yellow, two green, oh, and two purple. And I would like, and I would like, I did have one extra. Um, I did have one linked. Did that. An extra advantage. Well, I had five advantage though. Mm-hmm. You know, I'd like to give myself a boost die on this one and a boost die to my. Uh, well, no, 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 no. I'd like to, I'd like to spend three advantage to notice something. Okay, then I'm that not gonna. Is like, if you're gonna spend your advantage to just notice something, I'm not gonna have you guys roll this roll. Yeah, the the three. Yeah, okay. I, had, I rolled five advantage, so three okay. advantage. Um, yeah, okay. I'd like to notice because so, as a maybe I'm in a good a good position to kind of see something. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, you cleared a lot, enough of the enemies to... Uh... Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The device is crackling with black energy and in the center of the stage is appearing a symbol. It appears to be like a circle with arcane runes around it. Hey, there's something here in the middle of the stage that you need to check out because it's probably up your alley here. Um, it looks strange to me. I'm going to shoot these guys down on the ground for you. All right. Very well. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sounds it is like round... something I'm curious about. <laughs> it is now round two, and they go first. Right. And they are right on her heels. They oh. run up to her. They spend mm-hmm. their, two, um, their two maneuvers um, to get, get to her. her, and they don't have a, an attack. But they are nipping and clawing at your heels as you are moving away, Tunia. Yeah. All right. Then, you know what? Why don't you let me go? Yeah, go ahead. Maybe I can blast them. <laughs> and then, Disintegrate them. <laughs> so what I'm going to do... So how far away are they from me, then? Uh, they are medium range from you. Medium range. Okay. We're going to do that. So basically, they move to engage range to her, but it's still mm-hmm. medium range for you because you're at a third. You're, you're at a uh, mm-hmm. that's you're fine. Th- three dimensional playing here. You're up in a higher. Oh, I get it. I get it. Elevation. That's so going to be two. Pr- I think they're going in a big circle. So think I'm, about I'm, so I'm like not. That. So my so my so I'm not going to be spending the strain to do a piloting maneuver. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm just basically going to be I'm, I'm kind of over the. I'm kind of going to be hovering where I'm at because I noticed this symbol down here. Okay. Going to try and describe it to her as I spin around and I see those guys coming towards her. And I'd like to aim with my maneuver. Go ahead. To shoot at them. So I'll get a boost out of that. Um, And so I got two yellow, two green, a blue, and two purple. Would you like me to automatically upgrade it because I'm firing into... (laughs) My buddy's area. Yes, please. You are firing okay. into an engaged combat. Please automatically upgrade. Okay, then. Here we go. Oh, shit. Sorry, Stefan. <laughs> uh oh. Might have. Uh, I did roll a despair, by the way. <laughs> uh oh. However, comma. However. <laughs> we did do. Um, we did do seven damage. I'm going to link it. Okay. So that's 14 damage. So that's going to be 14 damage, pierce two total. Okay, they're dead. The whole okay. minion group is gone. You strafe the area. I strafed the area. <laughs> yeah. I have an extra advantage, too. So, and I did roll despair. So despair means you hit Tunia as well. Okay, seven damage with pierce one. Sorry. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So but she's got a soak soak of, of four, which means okay. soak three. Soak three. So you're gonna take four. Hey. Four. All right. That's for all the long stories. And by the way, the, the, <laughs> the one extra the one extra advantage, I'll give you a boost die. Now get your ass over all here right. and look at the symbol. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, Hurry up. Turn. All right. With a boost. So. <laughs> See, I gave you a boost die too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You took damage. Oh. I took strain. Oh, no, yeah. A little different, but <laughs> a little bit. I I'd say it, because it's a you. disintegrator pistol, it wasn't yeah. so much the you hit her. It was that you hit some of the when you hit the demons, bits of their bodies that didn't disintegrate. Watch. Long shattered time. and hit her back as she yeah, was yeah and some of the scenery and <laughs> oh that's gotta hurt oh i'm sorry uh yeah that's all right <laughs> all right are there any more of those uh demons left no it appears to be the all the demons in the area but we're gonna stay in round by right. round right no no problem uh, second just, round and the second round your turn <laughs> so i don't i don't need to activate my hazard field since the, uh okay. there's no enemies so i'll just move uh, towards mm-hmm. that symbol. Okay, you get to within visual range of it, which is short range. Mm-hmm. You get, you start to basically, you get past the the device a little bit, and then mm-hmm. you get to where you can duck and look over the stage and see it. Right. I will do that and look, and then I try to <laughs> analyze it. So you're ducking the device above you, but you're mm-hmm. looking over the stage at the same time. So you're kind of doing this. Um, happy middle zone between getting your head hit by flying objects and getting mm-hmm. a good look at the thing. Bobbing so my head back and forth. Your check. <laughs> All right. So what is my check then? What skill? It is going to be uh, knowledge ember. All and right. it's going to be uh, average difficulty normally, but I'm upgrading it. So it is one purple, one red. All right. Knowledge ember. I have that. Where is it? Ember knowledge. By the Ember. way, I, I, no? I forgot. I named the I named the space pistol that I have, the P thirty five space pistol. <laughs> it's, well, yes. my cousin has one that's a P thirty five space modulator, but. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and you said you were upgrading my check, Tony. Yes, I, I am. All right, I forgot so, that I did that. <laughs> uh, sorry, what was the uh, the difficulty? Um, it oh, is difficulty? average. Okay. So there you go, but we'll upgraded once. Okay, I got I got a boost dice, and I will use my know it all. Of course you will. To add four boost dice. Oh, you fucker, <laughs> dude! You know, give me yes. four strain. Just give it yeah. all to me. Take the four. <laughs> yeah. Just all take right. the four boost dice. Seems and fair. I, get, I did four wounds to you. <laughs> that's it. And I'll I'll spend a story point to upgrade one of my dice. Uh, All right. As Sweet. well. Right. Because how many boost dice do you have there, Stefan? Now I have five. <laughs> okay, and that is a record, I believe. Tied. No, uh, he's had six before. He's had six. Ah, oh, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> Close. All right, let's roll. There we go. Three successes and five advantages. <laughs> Holy shit, my head hurts. Oh, oh gosh. Okay, yes. so what's your lie? This is an arcane symbol that I've seen before, but it was, uh, you remember that wizard, that archon who told us. Get to the point. What is the symbol? <laughs> <laughs> well, it all traces back to the time of. <laughs> the symbol is a dis summoning circle. Mm. You want me to blast it? <laughs> so, so this is a really bad symbol. <laughs> All right, I'll blast it if you need me to. I don't know. Will that ha- will that work, or do you want me to blast this whole contraption? Well, with five with five advantage, <laughs> I probably know how to disable it. <laughs> with the five advantage, we'll keep that in mind for next time. Oh, <laughs> that's fantastic! <laughs> so, for our advantageous next time, we'll find out if anything is coming through that summoning circle. Uh-oh. Is it going to be another dis demon? It's going to be dis or something else. Oh, man. So. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, that's our show. Um, that's a great advantageous threat. Tony can't wait to see what happens. Yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> Will it be this or that coming through? We'll see. Yeah. Um, all right, Definitely so it'll right. be that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well. Um, all right, so so okay, so for our next show, final show for our the um part five of the Primeval Thule 
Secret of the Moon Door actual play that I'm running you, um, that Tony, um, Stefan, and then your son Sean through there, Tony. Mm -hmm. For next time, um, will you guys go through the moon door? Are you guys just going to lock it where you're at and go, whatever, we're done, (laughs) and it'll be a really short one, and then we'll have a talk about the whole the the adventure as a whole or we'll see um and now um any listener feedback stefan uh yeah kind of yes uh i uh so i'd like to thank all the people who are are contacting us about uh, getting uh men's health uh, subscriptions or to fill out medicare and t-mobile surveys uh etc uh, unfortunately, nothing we've received yet about erectile dysfunctions or male enhancements. Uh, <laughs> no. Your chagrin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no, sadly, no, no other feed, other, other uh, listener feedback. So. By the way, but, that's yeah, all spam. We, by the way, that we don't like, yeah. necessarily get all that. That's yeah. it. Our uh, our inbox is a bit full. Not full, but it's getting there. It's getting uh, some of these things. So. <laughs> Unfortunately, it just I made me our, laugh. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, our email is on a list somewhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, of course, that's true. Bummer. So anyway, if you, Tony, uh, give uh, give anyone else our contact information. Why don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so you can uh, you can email us about your uh, erectile dysfunction pills at finding the narrative podcast at gmail dot com. Um, not that I or anyone here is implying that we need them, but no, no, you know, no. we just want you to or feel Or really want to know about yours. What the <laughs> fuck, just... Tony? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you know, we just when want I roll people to feel empowered, okay? <laughs> we just yeah. want an email. We just want somebody to send us an email. We don't yeah. care what the subject is. Yeah, well, uh, uh, well, when I, when I roll a despair, you know, I don't that's know what that. happens. <laughs> uh, you can reach out to Stefan and myself and find the narrative on Facebook. All three of us and find the narrative on me. We, Stefan alone is on Twitter at FTN underscore Genesis. And of course, please recommend that you, to others to listen to us on all the places where podcasts happen. Podbean, iTunes, YouTube, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Audible, and Amazon Music. Uh, to mention the ones that we are specifically on. <laughs> hey, Bob, fart! <laughs> Sorry, just in case my buddies listen to this while he's practicing playing golf. Let's fuck with you. <laughs> right on. Right on. I don't know, just so, figured, it just popped in my head. <laughs> this is Tony saying, let's tell a story. Go ahead and spend a story point. This is Stefan saying, don't dare to ask for a boost dice or get a talent that gives you boost dice and bores the hell out of everyone else because, you know, this... This talent comes from when the Keyforce came out, and then it was written in Python. All right, all right, all right. right. (laughs) (laughs) Well, um, remember the rule of cool and make sure your Martian has the P-35 space pistol to shoot the fucker that has that talent. (laughs) All right? (laughs) To shoot his buddy who has that talent. But um, most importantly, just have fun. Good night, everybody. Finding the Narrative, a Genesis RPG podcast, is not affiliated with or endorsed by any companies mentioned on this show. Any of the products mentioned on our show or appear on our website are the property and copyright of their respected owners. All items are used under fair use and educational and review purposes. All other items are the intellectual property of Finding the Narrative, a Genesis RPG podcast. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved. <laughs>